Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. In India today, special investigation on how middlemen and DDA officials are trying to sell houses from the Prime Minister's Avas Yojana in the black market and are turning this scheme, which is meant for low cost housing for those who are very poor, into a money making opportunity. That's my top focus on the news track tonight. House of Scam Exposed Beneficiaries Deceived Land Mafia Shadow Looms Who's Derailing PM's Flagship Project Operation Avas, India Today's Special Investigation. The Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana is one of the flagship schemes of the Modi government. It aims to provide housing for all uh, in urban and rural India. But an India Today special investigation has revealed how the scheme is being circumvented in urban areas like the national capital. Who is behind this house of scam? Who are these profiteers who are taking what is meant to be affordable housing for all and turning it into a black market opportunity? Once known for its slums, the entire landscape of South Delhi's Kalkaji area has transformed in the last few years. Take a look at this residential complex and its five modern towers of low-cost flats for the economically weaker section and the low- and middle-income groups. Slum Punarvas Par Yojana Ke Tehet 3024 Nai Flat Ka Udhaatan Kare In November 2022, Prime Minister Narendra Modi handed over the keys to these 3,024 flats to the beneficiaries of the Kalkaji Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. The Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana is an in-situ slum rehabilitation scheme. Individuals from the economically weaker sections, lower income groups and middle income groups are eligible, essentially those with an annual income of up to 18 lakhs. The applicant must not own a permanent house in India to be eligible. However, these prime location flats in posh South Delhi have attracted the real estate mafia and scamsters. This gang is making a quick buck on the promise of allotting the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana flats to anyone willing to pay a premium. Through this sting operation, India Today's special investigation team will expose the network of people involved in this fraudulent activity. The criminals duping people in the name of the Prime Minister's housing scheme will be brought to light. Nitin Jain for India Today. Are flats built under the Prime Minister's housing scheme for the poor up for grabs in the black market? The PM Avas Yojana is for the rehabilitation of slum dwellers. But are brokers and corrupt DDA officials exploiting the scheme for extreme profit? Here's part one of India Today's special investigation, Operation Avas. Delhi Vikas Pradhikaran ne Delhi ke Kalka ji ke bhoomi hiin kyaamu ke jokki jhokli cluster mein rehne baale hazaaroon Delhi baasi paribaroon ke liye gudmatta yukta modern EWS flats ka nirmaan kiya hai. 345 crore rupai ki lagat se banne baale is pari yojana ke we got to know that some people were selling economically weaker section allotted flats under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana in the open market through middlemen. This led us to a broker named Sanjay Kumar Pandit, who resides in Sarita Vihar and works for a Noida-based builder. 
Pandit claims that the Kalkaji EWS flats are for sale. ये जो फ्लैट है ये डीडीए और डीडीए ने इसकी जुबी जो कोई ले रहा है ना उसके लिए बनाया तो अब इसमें क्या है ना कि सब तो उन्हीं को दिया जा रहा है पांच टावर बना तो चार टावर फुल हो गए एक टावर हो गए अब उसमें क्या है ना कि लगभग इन्वेंट्री शोल्ड आउट है पर पंद्रह बीस फ्लैट जो डीडीए के कर्मचारी हैं ना उन लोगों ने सोचा कि चलो हम बाहर निकाल देते हैं जिससे हमारा खर्चा बचा आ जाएगा होता है सर हर जगह होता है ये अंडरस्टूड है ठीक है तो अब अगर आप उस फ्लैट को डायरेक्टली लेने जाओ तो पच्चीस लाख भी दोगे तो नहीं मिलेगा बन तो चुका है कंप्लीट है ठीक है ना हमारे पास ऑप्शन है ऑफर है इस ये ऑफर है हमारे लिए अपॉर्चुनिटी भी तो जो चीज़ें हमें पच्चीस लाख में लेनी है बाद में वो अभी अपने को साढ़े छः मिल पाएंगे साढ़े छः मिल जाएगा ओनली we were not eligible for the EWS category and we never lived in a slum. So how was Sanjay Pandit going to include us in the list? और आप अपना आधार कार्ड देंगे या जो भी फैमिली मेम्बर के नाम से लेना चाहते हैं उसके नाम से आधार कार्ड देंगे एक फोटो देंगे और फैमिली डिटेल देंगे इस डिटेल के बिहार पर वो फैक्ट डिटेल प्रूफ करेंगे कि ये बंदा का घर वहीं था हमारी दिग्गी वहीं थी हाँ आपकी दिग्गी वहीं थी पेपर वेपर सब सब गारंटेड मिलेगा आपको हर तरह से आप सब अपने आज देंगे हो सकता कल शाम को हम बुला करके बाकी का पैसा दिलवा के आपके हाथ में पेपर हैंड Take the deal forward. Sanjay Kumar Pandit introduced us to the man behind the entire operation, Sudhir Sharma, a builder and property dealer who Pandit has worked with for over a decade. To confirm the details of payment for the flat, we met with Sudhir Sharma at his office in Noida. मतलब ऐसा ना है मैं आपको फिर बात के लिए कर देता हूँ एस के पंडित जी ने मुझे बताया है कि ये जो भूमिहीन वाले प्लॉट हैं उसमें मुझे प्लॉट दिला देंगे और उसका पैसा जो मैं इनिशियल ट्रांसफ़र करूँगा वो आपकी वाइफ के अकाउंट में ट्रांसफ़र करूँगा आपको कोई दिक्कत तो नहीं हाँ मतलब मैं साफ़ करना चाहता हूँ आप दोनों बैठे हैं कल ये ना हो कि मैं क्या बात है जो कहा उसमें कोई डाउट नहीं इसमें क्यों लेख सकता है गवर्नमेंट इंप्लाई नहीं होना चाहिए बाकी सब मैं दो हज़ार तीन के बाद दो हज़ार तीन का बने का बाद दो हज़ार तीन की टू उसका एंट्री का और दो हज़ार और दो हज़ार पाँच का सर्वे का कार्ड दिखाया होगा कार्ड दिखाया है उन्होंने पाँच का सर्वे का तो सब होता है उसमें सब यही कि दो हज़ार पाँच से पहले गवर्नमेंट सर्विस में नहीं होनी चाहिए ये एक सब है बस when we pointed out that we never lived in any slum and that we belonged to a Jain family, Sudhir Sharma promptly showed us a pink DDA card in the name of an Ankita Jain. He explained that this card, issued by the Delhi Development Authority, was the key to securing an EWS flat. Ankita Jain. ठीक है ये कार्ड चाबी है ना ये हाँ इस कार्ड के बन जाने के बाद वो भी चाहे कुछ नहीं कर सकते कौन डीडी वाले डीडी ये अंकित जी ने काम किया है ना करो करो वो हमारे सिविल इंस्पेक्टर हैं एक दोस्त अपन के फ्रेंड हैं उनकी वाइफ वो the web of deceit and the cast of characters involved in this racket just kept growing. So to make the deal look genuine, we were taken inside the Kalkaji camp and introduced to a man named Sheshmani. He claimed to be working with DDA on a contract basis. Four grade. 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 Four grade.
अपना लगा दिए हैं बयालीस हजार रुपया पगड़ने के लिए ताकि दस पंद्रह दस पाँच हजार से आप लोग का काम हो गया करा दिया आप लोग घर में चले जाओ किसी को भी आया दस बीस हजार को सौ देता हूँ Sheshmani also revealed that he himself acquired multiple flats under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana and advised us not to miss out on this opportunity. शादीपुर में लिया हूँ दो सौ बिहार में सब जगह कॉल लेना है सब रिश्ते रिश्तेदार करा दिए आपने दिल्ली में सर इतने सस्ते में मिलना भी उसके लिए हमें मिल गया ये मंत्री लेवल काम है इसलिए बहुत डर लगता है लेकिन मेरे पास आधार कार्ड नहीं है आधार कार्ड इसलिए सर 2003 2005 आधार कार्ड नहीं नहीं था आधार कार्ड इसलिए लिया जाता है ताकि तुम्हारा ये जिसने हिंदू नाम लिख के सही है यहाँ पे तीन का चौंसठ प्लेट म the claims and promises made by Sheshmani were tempting enough to lure anyone into his web of deception. So we decided to track down the DDM mastermind operating in the shadows, Jagdish Chandra. We met him in his car near Vikas Southern in central Delhi. The moment we sat in the car, Jagdish introduced Sheshmani as his representative. सर नमस्कार संजय जी नमस्कार आइए आइए आपके दर्शन करने थे सर दर्शन करना बहुत जरूरी था सर आपके हमारे अपने तिल्दी मानी अच्छा हाँ तिल्ले से चलना है बताओ सेस पर असल में ये काम बाजार जैसा नहीं होना चाहिए जरूरत मंद आदमी को बहुत भीड़ की जरूरत नहीं जिसकी जरूरत है बस सर भीड़ नहीं मैं अकेले ही का हाँ नहीं जरूरत मंद आदमी को होना चाहिए ये नहीं को कोई सेठ या वो पैसे वाला हो ज़्यादा वो फायदा उठा दे जिसके घर बाहर नहीं है उनको बचाने का काम बस काम हमें बचा दो बस और कुछ नहीं है आप सबको बचा रहा हूँ हम कम करेंगे बचा दो वही बात बस सर आप हमें मकान दिलवा Immediately after our meeting with Jagdish Chandra, Sheshmani raised the issue of payment, sharing both his and Jagdish Chandra's account details. Sheshmani suggested that 8 lakh rupees be transferred to the account, but the rest should be paid in cash. हम आठ लाख रुपया में तो एकाउंट डलवा सकते हैं। चार चार फ्लैट कर रहे हो ना? हाँ चार चार। एक काम करो अभी शुरू में आप आठ लाख रुपया दे दो। आठ लाख रुपया हमें दे दो। बाकी कैश दे देना। बाकी कैश दे देना। the cast of characters and their shocking claims reveal how these brokers are exploiting the prime minister's housing scheme meant for the poor and needy. The question that remains unanswered is how deep does this corruption run? And who else is involved in this fraud? Nitin Jain for India Today. This is truly shocking. This is supposed to be a scheme for the poorest of the poor to ensure that they get uh, accommodation which is affordable. And instead, you've now got touts, middlemen, DDA officials getting involved trying to sell these at ridiculously inflated rates in the black market. For reactions on this, we are joined on the broadcast by Sardar R. P. Singh, national spokesperson of the BJP. Anmol Pawar represents the Ahmadmi Party, and I have Ellen Rao, who's been Deputy Commissioner of Police <coughs> in Delhi. I want to go across to R. P. Singh for a reaction from the ruling party first. So this is in Delhi. This is a flagship government scheme. It's got the PM's uh, name and visage on it, and it turns out that black, uh, that black middlemen are selling these houses in the black market and. All kinds of people who seem to have plenty of other houses in the capital are finding some way of being able to buy these houses when they have absolutely no business. Why is there no check in place? Why is this scheme being distorted in this fashion, Sadar R.P. Singh? Well, uh, your investigation is good, and uh, but it would be complete if we can know that whether the people who did this scam 
could they get the houses also? I mean, there was, uh, you showed us a gentleman who took money, but the uh, could the pers person finally get the house or not? Oh, absolutely. If you so, see the investigation, he talks about how he's arranged these houses for other people and how many people have received these houses, which is why they have the confidence uh, that they can pull it through. In fact, not just is one house being promised in one of the investigations and in that comment, up to four houses are being promised by the same middleman and the same officials. Well, again, I reiterate, it's a promise. It will be appreciated if we can show which one of them has been fulfilled. I mean, I prob like if I pay you money, I pay you money, and then you say I'll get you the house. But did I got the house after paying the money or not, or was it just scam which happened and took the money and then uh, man went absconding or man did, uh, did a scam uh, on the other person? So there's the concern because I. I have myself been following one such scheme in Delhi, which is in Katpatli colony. And uh, there's a very good filter being laid by the government of India. Rather, people are rather uh, uh, not happy with the filter which has been put. Uh, I'm naming the colony name Katpatli, which was part of uh, my uh, constituency when I was MLA. And now they are out of the constituency. But still, the houses have been built in uh, the Shadipur belt. So there were stories like in this area also. But I personally have checked, there was none who got the flat. There were some scams and uh, police uh, is doing the investigation on that and people probably would be caught and I will appreciate your, uh, I appreciate your investigation and I'm hopeful Delhi police will uh, ensure that whoever has uh, taken money. And more power, on who do you blame? Uh, because the fact is that it's not as if the government wants that there be a scam, they're trying to provide affordable housing. Yet there are middlemen officials getting involved who are trying to make a killing. Is this just human greed or do you think there is lack of oversight? Mr. Kaval, the this land and police greed. in uh, Delhi. Can, can, can I respond? Can I? Mr. Power. Sorry. Huh. Mr. Kaval, the land and police in Delhi are under BJP control and the Delhi Development Authority, which is responsible for allotting the flats, it functions under the left hand governor and the BJP led central government. Yet while the roofs over uh, the poor and marginalized people are being taken away, they are sitting silently because they are preoccupied with filing false cases against the elected representatives. They are uh, occupied in forcefully uh, evacuating CMs, residents, and their whole focus is on creating obstacles in the work of elected government. And uh, the fact is that it's not just an isolated incident. In fact, your India Today carried out an investigation last year itself. But uh, no concrete action has been taken against the one who were involved in those, in those irregularities. Because these offering houses to the poor, it was just a jumla for winning intention, for winning election. Their intention was never to ensure that these poor people live comfortably in this house. Okay, that is so your charge today, is that priorities that is why, are misplaced. That is, let that let, is me, let today, me get a word in PD, from N.N. Rao, who has been Deputy today, Commissioner of Police I, in Delhi. Now, can I complete? This, just one second, sir. The politics is quite predictable, uh, but from a policing perspective, can this happen without the local SHO uh, and the ACP having some idea of what's going on under his nose? Because if you know, rich people who are clearly not slum dwellers or relatively rich or moderately well-off people who are not slum dwellers come in and start living in these houses. Somewhere, someone should suspect that something is amiss. Uh, yes, uh, good, uh, good evening Rahul ji and uh, to all your viewers and this, I think this is a, a remarkable investigation done by your team and your TV uh, channel and uh, this was very urgently to be exposed because the poor people are being uh, cheated uh, by such, uh, such type of scrupulous dealers. And uh, uh, if we come to your question that whether it can be possible before the, um, um, uh, that SHO is aware of it or not, it all depends upon the intelligence network of the local area SHO, whether he has any uh, information network to know about all the scrupulous uh, deals being carried out in his area, that is important. And obviously, uh, I, I can say that SHO must be uh, must be aware of if he is intelligent enough or he is alert enough that he must be aware of all the such type of activities because it is his duty to know what is going on in that area. And um, uh, if such things are being uh, noticed by your channel, that is really a shameful and this is 
uh, this could have been averted and that uh, i think that if the case is to be registered uh, after uh, uh, viewing this uh, uh, your channel or any investigation if it was already in the in in the eyes of um, uh, delhi police the case should have been registered okay. by now so what i've shown our viewers so far is just involved. part one of this investigation i want to show part two now flats for slum dwellers and the poor up for sale owners of property worth crores buying pm awas yojana flats PDA employees in collusion with brokers and property dealers. This is the reality of the PM Awas Yojana in Delhi. So, what about the real beneficiaries and those who fall victim to the scam? Find out in part two of our expose. Meet Ali Jan, a victim of the fraud in the name of slum rehabilitation flats. He handed over 3 lakh rupees in advance to middleman Moinuddin and Sanjay Kumar Pandit. Ali John was hoping to secure a flat for his daughter under the Prime Minister's housing scheme. But he's got nothing so far. Pradhan Mantri Yojana ke makan nikal raha hai. Aapki beti ko hum dilwa denge. To humne ki bhaiya kaise dilwa doge? Sahi hona chahiye. Hum to in cheezon ko jante nahi hai. To aur humne ke kitne ka milega? Bole 8 lakh rupees ka milega. और पहले आपको तीन लाख रुपए देने पड़ेंगे हमारे कि हमारे पास इतने पैसे नहीं है हमने उनको पचास हजार नगद दिए डेढ़ लाख रुपया पैसे दिए हमने और पचास पचास हजार करके उनको दो बार में दिए तीन लाख रुपए उनको पहुंच गए While making the payment, Ali John recorded a video of Moinuddin and Pandit receiving the cash. We began our investigation and met Moinuddin. Listen to how he tries to sell us DDA slum flats. Moedadin also shared more details, explaining that they use multiple IDs and avoid people with government jobs due to the risk involved. To bolster his claims, Moinuddin introduced us to Jamil, another buyer who paid 7 lakh rupees a year ago for a slum flat but never lived in a slum. Property 
There are hundreds of people like Jamil who own property worth crores of rupees in Delhi. They've never lived in a slum, yet they want to invest in these dubious deals for the cheap Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana flats. Perhaps they want to make a fat profit by reselling these flats later on. This is a toxic cocktail of greed and corruption in the national capital. Nitin Jain for India Today. We are now joined on this broadcast by the Lieutenant Governor of uh, the NCR region, VK Saxena, now joins us. Mr. Saxena, India Today's uh, special investigation team has done this uh, expose uh, showing how uh, different kinds of officials uh, are selling in the black market houses under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. This is a flagship scheme of the government to try and provide low cost housing to those who need it and it turns out sir that middlemen including junior level officials from the DDA which you run are selling this in the black market at inflated rates as Lieutenant Governor what do you make of this investigation sir and what, what is being put out today? Rauli, thank you very much for uh, uh, connecting me on this show. Uh, uh, it's a very big expose by India today and I can assure you I will take the strict action against the officials. I have zero tolerance on corruption and I have already taken several, you know, uh, stringent action against the DDA officials in the past and uh, I can assure you and I can assure the people of Delhi also that uh, nobody will be spared. Has anything of this kind come to your light so far? Are you aware of this happening or is this the first time it's come to light? Uh, uh, no, this is for the first time I came to know about this. And you are guaranteeing to everyone watching at this time that you will not allow this flagship scheme to be circumvented by these officials and action will be taken? Definitely. It goes without saying. I have taken, as, as I already said, uh, it's several shells of DDA and other departments on corruption matters and this will again, I can assure you, take very strict action against them. Okay, we hope to uh, see that action unfold over the next few days. Mr. V.K. Saxena, uh, Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, for joining us. Thank you very much and thank you for your prompt reaction on this investigation, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We've exposed the problem and the innards of how this scam is operating. Let's shift attention to what the potential solution can be. I want to go across to R.P. Singh. You know, it's very clear from this expose that DDA officials are involved, brokers, middlemen are involved, and that, uh, you know, those who are falling prey are having to suffer because they pay the money and, uh, you know, end up in all kinds of trouble later. As someone who's seen low-income housing across the capital, do you have any solutions on how we can prevent this from going on? What needs to be done right now? Rahul, uh, while you were doing this, uh, you were telecasting the story, the gentleman named Shish Mani, he said he has a house in Shadipur. I have a list of 2,843 people who have been allotted house in Shadipur, uh, on whom, whose name the house has been allotted. There's no name as Shish Mani because I've been personally tracking these uh, allotments. In, uh, I don't know about the Kalkai, but he has ensured uh, to be sure on the Shadipur side. So police need to crack on this such, such person who claims them to be a DDA official, and although whether he is there or not, he is temporarily employed or not. But coming to the issue of housing in Delhi, there's more than 7,000 acre land which has been acquired by Dushib in Delhi. In the last few years, not a single house has been built. There are houses being built by Sheila Dixit, which still stay unallotted. There are almost 30,000 houses which were uh, built by Sheila Dixit in her time, and out of which only 4,800 have been allotted till date. And then still, they're, they're in Balaswa and Narela uh, site. I personally visited that site. I'll appreciate if tomorrow one of your uh, cameramen come with me and see the condition of the houses. They are depleted. The pipes are broken. The stairs are already cracked. There are cracks in the building already there because uh, no one has bothered to allot. I mean, 35,000 total out of which 4,000 have been allotted, 4,800 to be specific, and 30,000 still stays unallotted from many years. Okay. So, Anmol Power, RP Singh making a larger point that yes, there may be some 
unscrupulous elements but let's not throw the ba baby out of with the bath water the fact is that the scheme relatively and this is correct has helped those who bought these houses in the odd case there may be some violation and the police and the local authorities will look at it what according to you needs to be done by the dda uh, and by the lg and the bjp to ensure that this kind of a scam is not allowed to go on rahul ji i uh, disagree with the fact that uh, that it's an isolated incident there are various states ruled by bjp in gujarat recently ineligible nri and builders were allotted house under the scheme in uh, uttar pradesh houses were allotted to ghosts and beneficiary received money transferred without bank accounts and uh, in uh, madhya pradesh 54.61 crore uh, scam in pf pm awas yojana in 59 districts 9217 individuals were fraudulently given benefits so this is not an isolated incident and as far as delhi is concerned the delhi development authority is silent the police is silent the lg is silent all controlled by central ruled bjp government when the roofs are being taken away from uh, above the heads of poor and marginalized people so they must take strict action against the ones who are involved in this uh, it also proves that it was just a jumla this allotment which took place just before the mcd elections it was just a uh, political jumla to ensure that they uh, win certain seats in the election they are not concerned about uh, these poor and marginalized people who are running from pillar to post even uh, for these basic necessities of life and there's rampant corruption every department of central government is engulfed in corruption and it's high time that the bjp must acknowledge it and take a strict action against the ones who are involved in it and lg must also ensure that rather than creating obstacles rather than uh, dislodging the elected governments rather than okay rp singh respond against respond to the rp spokesperson that the priorities of the left hand government the priorities of the bjp are flawed you are trying to prevent the cm from moving into a bungalow you are trying to create all kinds of optical obstacles he alleges in the working of the aap government rather than doing surprise checks monitoring these schemes and seeing whether they are actually being implemented in the way that they should well uh, rahul i am sorry to uh, build up a, another case like this someone outside say that i'll get you a job in india today and takes money and after that yes investigation should happen and that person should be Sent behind by whoever takes money for getting a job in India today, but I mean, fact is that none of the India today officials will be involved with that. Something like that. I said, I just now told you. I went through the list of all those 2,846 people who are being allotted house in uh, uh, Kartpuri colony. His money is not a na name on in that list. The guy yeah, he says he's got four houses. Yes, See, here's the thing I wish to make. And Alan Rao, this is where the police needs to get seconds. involved. Give me five seconds. Give yes. me five more seconds, please. Give me five. And also, I'm I'm saying on record. please send your person tomorrow with me i'll take him to balaswa narela show him the depleted houses which still need to be allotted crores need to need to be spent to uh, to repair them because 9 years they have not allotted those houses it was sheila dikshit to build those houses out of which 4800 houses were allotted and almost 30000 houses are still to be allotted okay. I mean, ellen and, rao that's where the role of the police now become becomes uh, important because listening to the political parties will give you a very partisan point of view uh, whether the gentleman has four houses whether this is a one off or it's a widespread scam how many people have benefited in this fashion who all have been tugged money taken away from them scammed all this needs to be investigated by the police if you were in the system at the present how would you approach the current commissioner approach this investigation Yes, Rahul. This is really a very serious uh, issue mm -hmm. of this uh, misusing of the uh, PM Awas Yojana, and no doubt that government is doing it uh, with all good intentions. But these scrupulous people, like the property dealers or so many other people who are in the uh, wake of that want of this uh, greedy greediness, they are doing all these things. But if I would have been uh, uh, as a police officer investigating this case. that that will be a, uh, that would uh, my, my first priority would be to identify all these persons to take all the details of the um, houses which have been um, uh, purchased or being uh, being sold to these uh, people by the, uh, the the property dealers and to identify all those property dealers who are 
dealing in this uh, scrupulous game of this uh, misusing the powers uh, poor uh, uh, that, that uh, misusing the uh, facility given by the government to the poor people and identifying after these uh, all uh, these things that investigation would have been done in a very speedy manner and no, no nobody should have been spared by the by now and i expect from the delhi police commissioner to depute any uh, special uh, unit or special task force to investigate all the because it will be a big scam if your investigation done by the second part is more important and they, this if this uh, investigation done by uh, your channel it uh, it is a really a, a, a piece of uh, good investigation and that should be taken to a logical oh, extent that's something that the lieutenant governor has promised as well that there will be a thorough and immediate probe as there should be and i hope that you know rp singh my concern is you are so bent on defending the scheme and we're not even questioning the scheme that you are refusing no, no, no. to I'm buy not. the fact that there could be a scam that there could be unscrupulous elements trying to benefit you have to approach this with an that. open mind for god's sake i'm accepting that there there can be people who can be doing scam on the name of the pradhan mantri yavas yojana and i i have finally tried to reach out to lg and i got a message that yes they are already put person on a job to investigate and you'll reach out to your team also whoever is involved will be uh, taken to task when no one should be spared for any scam which is happening on name of the, any scheme but i reiterate again for god sake ask aam aadmi party to allocate those 30000 houses which have been not been lotted in last 9 years they they are okay. they need certain repairs and mr power final words i'm out of time Mr Singh this inaction on the part of lieutenant governor <laughs> and the delhi police controlled by him has Sir, led to this rampant corruption in each and every department Sir, and I the story was there and by request you to hour, please please consider the investigation is already on please consider need? about But those please who nine are years sir, nine years and so ensure that they get and they get more sources now at least so bhut bangle ban ke sir these of life mera kripa karte hain unki chhat mein chala kar alert kar dijiye meri aap se darkhwast hai ki chhat mein chala kar dijiye let this all go purpose i don't like it when guests talk over each other because that's only making noise not sense the fact is we've put out uh, an investigation i expect that the delhi police said we heard the lieutenant governor promise that uh, he will order a probe and that action should be taken now whether these claims are correct how much money is being taken we've had some case studies where people say they've been duped we've got claims being made about houses being bought uh, through this scam this now needs to be probed by the law enforcement agencies and i expect action be taken so lieutenant governor saxena we will hold you to your word and i will track very closely what happens from here noel tata the half brother of ratan tata has been appointed the chairperson of tata trusts noel tata has been a part of the tata group for more than 40 years his appointment was made during a meeting held in mumbai and was unanimously agreed upon by the board of tata trusts Prominent among those present at Ratan Tata's funeral was this silver-haired gentleman. Noel Tata, half brother of Ratan Tata, will now succeed him as chairperson of Tata Trust. The philanthropic entities which control the massive Tata empire. In a crucial meeting held Friday morning, a day after Ratan Tata's funeral, Noel Tata was nominated as the successor unanimously by the board of the trusts to fill the huge vacuum left by Ratan Tata's demise. Noel already was a trustee of the two major trusts the Durabji Tata Trust and the Sir Ratan Tata Trust which together own 66% of Tata Sons the holding company of the diversified Tata Group Though the trusts have two vice chairmen former defense secretary Vijay Singh and TVS Motors chairman emeritus Venu Srinivasan reports say the Parsi community wanted someone with the Tata surname as chairman of the trusts Interestingly being nominated as the Tata Trust chairman precludes Noel Tata from being the chairman of Tata Sons. Ratan Tata was the last to wear the two hats. In 2022 the board of Tata Sons passed a resolution to ensure the same person did not hold both the positions. So who is Noel Tata? The 67 year old has been with the Tata group for 40 years. He is currently the chairperson of Tata International, Voltas and Tata Investment. and the vice chairman of Tata Steel and Titan Noel's passion however has been Trent which he has headed for more than 11 years under his leadership Trent has grown into a 2.9 lakh crore rupee company over the past decade 
Noel is the son of Simone Tata, the powerhouse behind the Lakme brand before it was sold to Hindustan Unilever in 1996. So how are Ratan Tata and Noel related? Ratan Tata was the son of Nawal Harmozji Tata, who was himself adopted by Sir Ratan Tata in 1918. Nawal Tata had two wives. The first one was Sunu Komisariat, the mother of Ratan and his younger brother Jimmy Nawal Tata. The second wife is Simone Tata, who gave birth to Noel. Noel has three children with his wife Alu Mistri, Leah, Maya and Neville Tata. All the three children of Noel Tata are already involved with operations of the Tata Group. The three have also been brought on board as trustees of five trusts that are affiliates of the Sir Durabji Tata Trust and Sir Ratan Tata Trust. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. There was high drama in Uttar Pradesh's capital Lucknow today as the Samajwadi party hit the streets. This after Akhilesh Yadav claimed that the Yogi government prevented him from visiting the Jai Prakash Narayan International Center to mark the birth anniversary of the socialist icon. The SP chief ultimately jumped a wall to garland the statue of JP Narayan that was mounted on a car. A big face-off between the Samajwadi party and the Yogi Adityanath government in Lucknow on the birth anniversary of freedom fighter and socialist icon Jay Prakash Narayan. Hundreds of Samajwadi party workers led by Akhilesh Yadav gathered outside the Jay Prakash Narayan International Center in Lucknow to pay homage to the leader whose movement led to the fall of the Indira Gandhi government following the imposition of emergency. The authorities had put up barricades on Thursday to prevent entry to the center, work on which began under the Akhilesh government but was stopped after the BJP came to power. Protesters led by Akhilesh Yadav tried to make their way through the barricades but were stopped by the police. In the end, the Samajwadi party chief garlanded a bust of Jay Prakash Narayan mounted on a vehicle outside his house. Akhilesh called the chain of events an attack on democracy. The party has done good work. But today, we जन नायक जयंत प्रकाश जी को याद भी कर रहे हैं यह सरकार रोकना चाहती है कि हम माल्यार्पण पर ना करें लेकिन हम लोगों ने यहां पर सड़क पे ही माल्यार्पण पर कर दिया है और जयंत प्रकाश जी के नाम पर जो स्मारक बना है उसको इसलिए ढका हुआ है कहीं साजिश है उसके पीछे समाजवादी लोग जयंती हर साल मनाते हैं और इसी तरह मनाते रहेंगे The Lucknow Development Authority cited security reasons for blocking entry into the center at Gomti Nagar in Lucknow The BJP accused the Samajwadi party of playing politics over Jay Prakash Narayan मुझे लगता है कि जय प्रकाश नारायण जी की चाहे वो जन्म तिथि हो चाहे पुण्य तिथि हो या कोई भी अवसर हो उसके उस उस पर जो है वो उनको श्रद्धा सुमन अर्पित करना जो है वो किस किसी को रोका थोड़ी जा सकता है आप अगर उसके नाम पर अगर सियासत कर रहे हैं और उसको जो है वो बात का बतंगड़ बना करके उसके सियासी गोला भाग करने की कोशिश कोई कर रहा है तो उससे उनको फायदा होने वाला नहीं है The BJP's ally the JDU described the Samajwadi Party protest as a political stunt while the India bloc called the BJP's action unconstitutional. उन पर भी उन्हें कुछ कहना चाहिए था। आज लोकनायक की जयंती है। उन्हें जरूर ये देश को बताना चाहिए कि इन जीवन मूल्यों को किस हद तक समाजवादी पार्टी ने अखिलेश यादव जी ने आत्मसात करने का काम किया। उनको श्रद्धांजलि देने का अधिकार अखिलेश यादव जी को नहीं है, जो राज्य के पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री हैं, एक पार्टी के राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष हैं। तो मैं तो समझता हूँ कि ये भाजपा चिल्ला चिल्ला के बता रही कि आज भी आपात कल लगा हुआ है। आपको श्रद्धांजलि देने का अधिकार नहीं। The face-off is a repeat of what happened last year. In 2023, following a scuffle with security personnel, Akhilesh Yadav had jumped over the gates after he was denied permission to garland the statue of Jay Prakash Narayan on his birth anniversary. With Santosh Sharma in Lucknow, Bureau Report, India Today. The Congress-led Karnataka government has decided to withdraw criminal cases against AIMIM leaders accused of leading a mob that attacked the police and attempted to storm a cop station during the 2020 Hubli riots. The decision has sparked fresh political tensions in the state. 
While Chief Minister Siddharamaiah has defended the move, the BJP has criticized the Congress government, accusing it of shielding terrorists. Two years after the riots in Hubli that hit national headlines, the Sidramaya government in Karnataka has withdrawn charges against all the 139 accused. The unrest began on April 16, 2022, after the image of a saffron flag atop a mosque was shared on social media. This sparked outrage in the Muslim community, leading to protests outside the old Hubli police station that turned violent. Four police officers were injured in the attacks. AIMIM leader Mohammed Arif was among those held for the violence. The charges against the accused included offences like attempted murder and rioting, but all of that has now been withdrawn. Chief Minister Sidramaya has actually defended the decision to drop the cases. The BJP rained fire at the Congress government, saying this was a step of Muslim appeasement. Some of the ministers, some of the MLAs from of the Congress party, they wrote to the government chief minister and the home minister that uh, cases should be withdrawn. The police department and the Ministry of Law of the state government, they have opposed the withdrawing of the case. In spite of that, they have withdrawn it. That means, in a way, they are supporting Islamic fundamental activist, activity, activities. The charges against these rioters were dropped a year after Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar wrote to the police department demanding a withdrawal of the cases against the accused. With Nagarjun Dwarkanath in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. Wishing all our viewers a very happy Dashera. I look forward to seeing you Monday evening at 8pm. Till then, from all of us here on the news track team, goodbye, goodbye.